Hi, this is Frederick. Welcome to Motex Modular Corner. Last episode we finished the build of the case. We have the case here with all modules and we had a question from one of our followers, Gary, and he asked us, cool video, great soundtrack while you work. Next episode, an explanation of the modules, why you chose them and the test run. So today I will tell you why I chose those modules and I'll do some basic patching so you can learn how a modular synthesizer works and also have uh, an overview of how the modules sound. Without further ado, if you're new to the channel, please click the bell button and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you like my content and I would say let's get into the modules. So most of these modules consists of Sputnik modular modules. They are a Russian brand and they are kind of Bukla-esque uh, modules. They sound a little bit like Bukla, they are inspired on the Bukla stuff, but they're not that uh, expensive. They're fairly affordable modules. If you go into real Bukla stuff, it's not compatible with Eurorack, so that's one problem, but also it's extremely expensive. The basic Bukla stuff for a module, I think it's about a thousand euros minimum. Um, it's really out of my league. I don't have to uh, have Bukla stuff because it, it's more for experimental music. Of course, techno can be made with Bukla uh, synthesizers and there are artists who do so. But I'm into Eurorack, so therefore those Sputnik modules, they really appeal to me. Now, they don't make them anymore. I'm still looking for the mixer to have really a nice set of only Sputnik modules in here. I matched the Torlex, the blue of the Torlex, to go with the blue on the knobs and on the, the face plates. So, yeah, it, it's a nice system. The oscillators, they sound really analog, really fat, really nice. You have some wave shaping, which is actually a mix between pulse wave and sine wave, or sawtooth and sine wave got a five step voltage source it's like a step sequencer it has five steps but you can use four steps if you want to stay in the yeah, four to the floor uh, rhythms four rows of uh, voltages so you can manipulate multiple modules multiple parameters by just this sequencer alone it also has pulses on every step so when it goes through a step, it will trigger maybe an ADSR or some other modules. And yeah, it, it, it has a start-stop button, loop functions, all different kinds of stuff. We'll get back to this uh, in a few moments. I've got the West Coast random source. It's a Bukla-esque way of randomizing things. It's a nice voltage source. It also has three colors of noise. Pink, white and blue noise. Pink being the most uh, filtered noise. It, it's more kind of a, a darker noise. The white noise is just all frequencies. Noise, blue noise, it's like a little bit high past. It's very high in yeah, pitch. In tone. Let me explain it uh, that way. Then I have quad function and trigger source which is an AD envelope generator which can be set on re-triggering uh, itself so it's becoming a low frequency oscillator can be set on trigger or on sustain. Then we have the quad VCF and VCA. 
it's a combined non-resonant filter and voltage controlled amplifier section four of them and you can choose whether uh, each channel is a VCF is a VCA or you can combine it and then you have kind of a low pass gate where if you turn the knob down the filter goes down you have low pass uh, enabled when you turn it all the way up the filter gets brighter and brighter and the volume gets louder it's nice for percussive sounds because it gives a very natural feeling to them and then i have the four tap delay which is a digital delay based on a, an analog uh, delay echo um, device which has three inputs and four different taps to uh, get the delayed signal so that's very useful a normal delay most delays they have one output and a feedback loop of that output to the input which you can turn up turn down uh, bypass but this it doesn't have that feedback connection it has multiple inputs and you can make it yourself then i have a mixer I am waiting for an opportunity to buy the six channel Sputnik mixer but for now I have the Pittsburgh mixer in here to do some mixing it's useful I use it with the delay also the VCA can be used as kind of a mixer section or you can just put four oscillators into the mixer and then have one signal going out to a filter, to a VCA and to the delay eventually. And then a trigger module from Tip Top Audio. There are samples in there, you can put a flashcard in there and then you can cycle through the samples and trigger them. And last but not least, the outs from Pittsburgh Modular, which is a module that yeah is needed if you have quarterings jacks and you want to go from mini jacks to quarter inch jacks also I have a phone output uh, but i'm not using this now i'm just outputting the mini jack to my console and then yeah this is for power i let somebody made a cable that routes the voltages from my other case which is a big one and has in one of those compartments not that many modules so i can tap those voltages plus 12 minus 12 plus 5 volts and ground and i route them through this cable into this case so everything gets powered by my other modular case. If you're making a case, if you're putting modules in, always look at the voltages the modules need. If you have a lot of digital modules, it could be that you need a lot of plus 5 volts. If your case doesn't support it, your modules won't work. If you get over the maximum amount of voltage your power source can provide it will overheat it will give problems so always go like on modular grid and look up or the manufacturer's site and look up how much power your power supply can handle and how much the modules need so you need to combine this and if the numbers are correct then it's all okay Let's get into basic modular synthesis. If you have a normal synthesizer, if you have like a Moog, you have an oscillator section, mixer section, a filter section, then an ADSR section, then maybe some effects just to the output, to the amplifier and then to the output. Um, this system is kind of similar in a way that I have an oscillator section, a mixer, the AD section, which is a simplified ADSR, just has an attack and a decay, 
the amplifier section, which also is a filter section, non-resonant, so you don't get these squelchy uh, TB303 kind of noises where the resonance of the filter is very high. Uh, and then I have an FX unit, the 4 tap delay, uh, five step voltage source, so that's one way to manipulate pitches and other control voltages which affect the length of the decay or the attack or whatever you assign it to. And the random source which I won't uh, be delving into uh, today. I will concentrate on the most basic thing in a synthesizer and it's the oscillator which is actually always pushing out uh, sound. So that's why I already have my mixer plugged in and turn the knobs down because if it goes directly to my, uh, my console it will give a lot of volume and I don't want that. Let me take such a patch cable, it's a monophonic cable, it is a tip and a sleeve uh, jack which is okay because most modules are um, monophonic and the stereo modules they just use two of these cables to route it to somewhere else so and mostly it's at the end of the chain like the delay even with this delay i can do some stereo because i have four taps so if i have a stereo mixer like the sick channel uh, mixer from sputnik then I can pan those, but there are plenthora of stereo mixers, so that's always a possibility. Let me plug, plug my cable into an output. I chose the wave shape because, yeah, because, yeah, I don't know why I just chose it. <laughs> I can put it in the sub, but might be less interesting and put it in an input and then I can raise the volume and now you don't hear anything because the oscillator is all turned down and that's not volume wise but it's actually um, going at a very low inaudible frequency so when I turn this knob it will become audible. and it will probably yeah annoy the cats a lot so this is a tone and i can switch crossfade between another tone because i chose the wave shape output if i don't do it and go into the sub i get one octave lower and a pulse wave, uh, uh, triangular wave, it's a little bit softer than the other one and then the sign it's a very smooth wave shape because it doesn't have overtones uh, sign it's just one pitch therefore it's very soft it's a little bit uh, lower in volume but if you have a kick Mostly that's a sine wave, um, if you have the real low end you get that with a sine wave. So let me um, combine two oscillators, that's also a good thing to do. And then when we turn this up. We have an interval that we can tune. And when it's very close together, it's like a little bit moving because they're analog oscillators. A digital oscillator, when you put it really spot on, it will stay in tune like normally forever. And then you have a very sterile sound with 
analog gear they're always a little bit shifting and you get these nice sounds. If you detune it a little bit, you hear the pitch or the volume change a little bit and that's, that's because you have a wave shape and another wave shape on top and sometimes they will lower each other's uh, volume. It's especially in uh, low frequency sounds very obvious because the frequencies, the, the wave shapes are very long and the time it gets um, the time it gets lower in volume is more pronounced. So we have an oscillator. Okay. Let me route the output to a filter. So we go into the filter, I'll put it on filter mode which is now all the way turned down. I'll raise the volume of the oscillators, you don't hear anything, only low tones can get uh, true, but the sound was rather high pitched so it's completely turned off. When I open this, it fades in and it gets brighter. All these knobs they have CV inputs and a CV input is control voltage. You can um, manipulate, uh, automate that with outputs from like the step sequencer or just any other module that outputs of, uh, voltages. So if we take an oscillator, we take a wave shape, we'll let it just be on the sign. We put it very low frequency. Then we modulate until we get into the audio range and then we're actually modulating the filter with audio rate which is also a volume, a uh, voltage. What we can do is take like a VCA, I'll put the lowest one on VCA. Let me first choose another output. So instead of directly going into the filter, we put it in a VCA and then from the out of the VCA back into where it was uh, before, into the filter. Now when we raise the volume of the VCA, we should hear a slight modulation. We can turn it up and we get more modulation. It acts kind of like an attenuator, like an amplifier, which you can turn down, you can raise in volume. And actually, you can also modulate this. So, why not? Let me do it. Just take the CV input, take another module an output, also kind of low pass, and then we modulate the modulation source. So this is great about modular synthesis, that is, you can see all the connections you made, can directly route something into another input you can have happy accidents 
and also it's very tactile so I take the cable and sound stops I put it back in and I have something different it's so I can tweak those sounds around and what I also can do is modulate the oscillators with each other so let me take one of those outputs put it in the frequency modulation of the other and we get another tone what we then can do is take the output of the modulated oscillator and cross modulate between these oscillators which will go probably bonkers in no time so it's modulating this hard that the sound sometimes stops so if you're very careful but you can achieve really nice uh, things by this so interesting but not always that useful okay let me see we have a mixer with the two oscillators going into the filter then we actually let me see we want to take the output from the filter and go right into the VCA so this module is set to VCF this module is set to VCA if we open the signal we get sound so what I'm going to do is connect the CV to the filter from the um, ADS, uh, not the ADSR, uh, the uh, attack and decay envelope generator. So the AD, put the output from channel 1 into the filter from channel 2 into the VCA. And what, then, what I want to do with this is get a pulse, a trigger, perhaps this one. And now it will be, I can sh shape, um, I can shape the way how it opens and closes the filter. Very useful. And I will do the same with the VCA in there not in sync so they will act weird but you can generate rhythms this way that's very nice Okay, let me introduce you to the step, five step voltage source. This way I can get into some more tonal control. Let me first um, get the pulls out into the pulls in. And instead of taking the oscillator in low frequency mode, actually the pulse out is exactly the same. It's a pulse and it goes very slowly. If you turn up the um, 
potentiometer it will go very fast but let's begin with making it very slow and then we have a trigger on both channel 1 and channel 2 I could simplify this and put channel 1 in combo but then I don't have separate control over the attack and the decay of the filter and the amplifier um, on its own channel so let's put the VCA slower and the filter a little bit quicker um, DK wise attack we just have it furry um, direct hitting so it's a very steep attack curve it just it hits right away another cable this will go to the one volt per octave input from the oscillator and let's see we'll put it in CVA out from the five step trigger source and then route it to the oscillators so now it's all turned down these uh, five step voltage sources if I raise one it will accordingly to how it's tuned raise the tone or lower the tone of the oscillators let's put the volume a little bit higher and let's speed it up so now it's a four step three step and what's really nice if I engage the last step like I did now and leave the fourth step disengage I can actually switch manually between the first three and the last two so that can be very interesting So, yeah, it's nice. Let's control something else with the five step voltage source. Let me get another cable. You never can have enough of these because, yeah, you have plenty of holes and they all, no, not all, but you would want to fill some of those to get inspiring results. Let's take the second voltage source and route it to the decay time of the filter. So now it's modulating the decay time. Sometimes it will be, be quick. And this way you can get kind of syncopating rhythms. Very interesting. And perhaps the attack of the filter. And then you have a special melody going on, but Modular is all about exploration, you just have to tweak around until you get something very nice. You can sync from an external clock if you have a converter or if your output device, uh, the, the source of what you're syncing to has like CV output, a clock source. Or like a drum machine, just uh, take a hi-hat, put it um, 
very short decay and just send it to the 5 step voltage source in the day they would use a 909's rim shot to just um, trigger and clock other synthesizers so you can do a lot of stuff with this I'm now going to introduce or one moment I'm going to let me see I'm going to take the output and from the oscillator and route it directly into the input so we lose the other oscillator but what I can do is like frequency modulate this better so okay kind of like this it's just an example so I'm going to route some um, some outputs through the mixer from the 4-tap delay and I'm running out of cables so you never can have enough of these so let me take two cables yeah two cables is okay okay let's shut this down for a brief moment, let's leave it dangling right there. Let's take the output which we heard seconds ago, put it in channel 1 of our mixer. Now we just hear it like we heard it seconds ago. I also routed it to a 4 tap delay so I can raise its volume and then introduce one of those taps so we have have like one time coming after the initial um, sound what I'm going to do is actually taking this and feeding it back into the input from the delay and then we get a normal feedback loop so it will always lower in volume but you get yeah, the sound of a, a delay. It has a tail and it all depends on how you put the volume. If you put it very high it will get in a feedback loop and it will begin to oscillate. Because it's a digital delay it doesn't sound that good. You can get nice saturation when doing this with an analog delay but the other benefit of a digital delay is when you route hi-hats through this you will hear all the highs in the hi-hats. If you route it through an analog delay it will be filtered down by a big amount and you will only hear some low frequencies and you don't want that with hi-hats so let's just go for for this 
and then we have another input to our mixer from the 4 tap delay and let's take half of the time of our first output and then we actually we raise the volume get an extra you get every time it hits every second time it gets accentuated you also have quarter of the time and then it gets accentuated every uh, quarter note and so you can make nice shifting no not really shifting but nice rhythmical patterns with the delay also have a third of the time and then you get like a little bit more swingish sound not for the moment but And when we will route it back to our input, we will also get feedback from that signal. So, not exactly a techno banger, but I hope the point comes across. And yeah, modular systems are to be experimented with. You can set up a really very simple patch and get great results. You can make it very complicated and eventually it will be some kind of avant-garde uh, melody going on and it's close to unusable. But happy accidents, they happen all the time. This is not really a very danceable patch I'm having now but possibilities with modular synthesizers are extremely open so there are many many modules in existence and these are quite basic but you have modules from all kinds of manufacturers that combine some of these uh, modules and they really expand them upon those and then with one single module you have kind of a whole synthesizer or modulation um, wizardry going on and yeah it's fun to tweak around like I said this is very basic but in conjunction with my other stuff it gets very very interesting you can use it as just an effects unit but on its own with oscillators and a mixer and an AD SR envelope generator or AD envelope generator VCAs filters mixers effects then it gets really really interesting so the sky is the limit your wallet is also a limit when it comes to modular synthesizers but that's a total different topic and I won't be <laughs> discussing it today so let's tweak a little bit around and I have this nice atmosphere going right now so let me let me see if I can yeah ruin it <laughs> because mostly that's what will happen you have something nice going on and you tweak two knobs and it's gone but that's also the beautiful thing about modular synths when it's gone it's gone so when it's there you really have to appreciate and love what you're doing. Very nice.
something very out otherworldly. cables we put into this it really will sound bonkers This is pure noise, but noise can be very nice and interesting. is interesting useful
these are interesting textures and it's with a normal synthesizer you can't achieve these kind of sounds. The question is do you want to achieve these kind of sounds? But this is one of an infinite amount of sounds you can actually make with a system like this. So in my opinion for sound design it's totally worth it investing in a modular synthesizer. You can do very regular stuff with it, a normal synth line. You can play it with a little keyboard if you have CV out from the keyboard or MIDI to CV. Or you can do some very experimental stuff like we're experiencing now. So I would say let me turn all these knobs down and I think this was kind of an interesting patch. It started out as a few normal oscillator sounds but it developed in something very... Um, first it became, it became not that interesting, not that great but with a little bit of tweaking and cross manipulation modulating modulators and stuff it became in my opinion very interesting maybe not as the big part of a track but as a layer as a as a sound source as maybe a, a section to to get the track started or like in a drop or something like that something otherworldly yeah, I think it's interesting indeed and yeah, if you have any questions please put them in the comment section below and I will do another follow-up video. Um, let me know what you think about the modular, if you're interested in a modular, if you want to know anything about particular modules or things that you can't get sorted out in the world of modular synthesis and yeah I'll come back to you with a reply or with a follow-up video so until next time please give this video a thumbs up hit the bell button and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah thanks for watching